Welcome to Noble Review Presents Economic Models in History. In this video, we're going to apply some basic economic models to the Black Death. In the late 1340s, Western Europe was annihilated by the bubonic plague. We're talking 75 million people dead. That's 30 to 60 percent of Europe's population for the time. So when you're losing that many people, you're losing a lot of resources. That's a lot of labor. And then you're going to have a lot of land sitting there, unused. Capital goods, unused. That leads to a decline in economic growth. So let's take England's production possibility frontier. If we looked at England, say 1337, that's the start of the Hundred Years' War with France. During that time, England, you know, they want to focus on producing food for the people and also uh, goods for the war effort. So let's say armor. So when the plague hits England between 1347 and 1348, we're going to see a decline in the production possibility frontier as England is losing thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of potential uh, laborers in their economy. Not only that, by 1357, when we see this, after we see this inward shift, we still have some unemployed resources. We have lands lying fallow, not being used at all, and we have people that are just unemployed, searching for jobs. If we look at the output, changes in output will decrease as well. So when people cut back on their spending, they're not purchasing as many you know, horse and oxen and food even, the demand, or aggregate demand, would shift to the left. Now, while that's a significant impact on the real GDP as it lowers it and leads to rising unemployment, we also saw an increase in resource costs because there was less of a supply of labor. So that's resulting from the disease and the malnutrition and death. So the aggregate supply curve most likely also shifted to the left. So in England, there were higher prices, less output, and some increased unemployment in the short term. So when the supply of labor shifts to the left, that leads to higher wages. Those are the higher resource costs that we just mentioned. Now, the English government knew that wages were rising. However, the government wanted to keep the wages low and to keep prices low to deal with the inflation. So what England did is it established a wage ceiling, a legal maximum that the workers could earn. And they set it at the pre-plague levels. So they didn't want farmers to earn what they were worth in the labor market. Now this helped a little bit in terms of keeping wages low. However, it also led to a shortage of workers. Now, because of the potential shortages of labor that happen from price ceilings, the government also made it illegal for farmers, the laborers, to move to better locations. They were tied to the land, which makes sense when you're working with uh, the manorial system and the serfdom that was still in place during the bubonic plague. So when the plague hits, it's really not great to be a peasant. And in history, it's usually not great to be a peasant in general. As a result of the bubonic plague, we see less demand for horses and we see less demand for oxen in Europe. It was estimated that the price of a horse before the plague worked out to be about 40 shillings. Once the plague hits and people die, there are fewer buyers in the market. Demand shifts to the left, and then the price of a horse went down to as low as, say, seven shillings. Oxen tells us a similar story where we get an ox for 12 shillings and then it drops down to four shillings. However, we see an increase in demand in other industries. You know, the famous quote for the time, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow you may die. We saw people turning to gambling halls and taverns. So people want to get liquored up and they want to have a good time gambling. Now let's look at some of the post-plague effects. So this is after the 1350s. Now the plague would come back here and there, but not nearly as devastating as it was in the late 1340s. So if you were a, a, a peasant in the post-plague world, it was, it was a good time to be a peasant, and here's why. Well, for one, we see an end to serfdom. So 
You're no longer tied to the lands like you once were. And there was more land available, so now there were lower rents. It was cheaper to own land. That's pretty sweet, isn't it? Also, there was greater demand for meat. So people were shifting away from farming all day, which is very, very labor-intensive, and they instead would focus on tending to animals for protein. There was also an increase in wages. Wages were rising naturally and somewhat freely depending on the industry. We also see more inheritance. It's no longer just the oldest son that could inherit property, but now it's all sons and even daughters can get property too. So overall, we see an increased standard of living for those that survive the plague. Well, that wraps up this Noble Review video on the Black Death. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Economic Models in History. And remember, these models are all around us. There's economics everywhere. So be on the lookout for them and have fun with them.